Hello, Entrepods, and welcome to season three. This season, we are interviewing and talking about ethical entrepreneurs who are making money and changing our world. Join us as we discover how we can step into power as creators and business owners to reshape business into one that values humanity, our planet, and our shared future. You won't want to miss a single episode. Don't forget to subscribe today. I feel like what keeps a lot of entrepreneurs back from some of those big opportunities is they don't have financial confidence. They're not sure they can read cash flow statements and balance sheets. And so when they would get that big binder of how they might franchise, they they're feeling intimidated. They don't know how to read it. So that's why I also love, let's get serious about money from, you know, as soon as possible, make sure you know how to read those things on your own. You have that confidence. You also know how to manage money personally, because then when you come to some of those decisions, you're going to know better what you're looking at, know the questions to ask so that you don't get taken advantage of. Cause there's plenty of people out there that are trying to. Yeah. A lot of what I've worked with is to know who's an investor and who's a tire kicker and who's a good buyer and how to even know what a good offer is. But part of that is bringing in someone like Amanda to come and look and help us look at the financials. I can't, you know, we, we need that other view, you know, because I'm not a financial advisor. So I have to, you know, I will bring in financial advisors if it's getting to close to closing or we have an offer and I'm like, eh, there's some stuff in here. I need, we need somebody else to, to look at it. But so getting an advisor is really important, but also to being good with money is it, I'm going to hearken this back to your story. You're like, but we're paying all of our bills and we're saving a little bit. I'm great with money. And then somebody gives you this aha documentary and you're like, but what, what, what's the, what type of money are they talking about? And when what we found when we it came to increasing our profits actually making sure we were personally benefiting from our business so that we could have wealth outside of it you know which then we could put back into the business in case of emergency or opportunity um that actually was great for us personally even if we kept the business forever it meant we felt more confident financially we were more stable um and we could help the business scale and grow if we wanted to all like it just increased our options and it turned out that was the exact same thing we needed to sell the business to show that we were taking a profit that whoever bought the business could take that same profit or use it to hire more personnel to work there so that they didn't have to work in it. It could be more passive for them. All those things. It's actually kind of funny how that works. It's making the business work for you is also going to make it work to sell. So that's exactly where I come in when I'm working with people is talking about, okay, how is the business going? Is it working for you? In what ways is it actually giving you life and joy? And in what ways is it stealing your joy and causing you stress? And how how does the money side of it, how can you align it with your actual goals, not just what the internal revenue service says you need to do or how you need to file or, you know, like how do we make this business work for you? And sometimes that's you need an extra revenue stream or you need to cut a product or there, you know, uh, different tweaks. Um, but coming at it from that lens of how do I make this business work toward my personal hopes, dreams, goals, financially and otherwise, I feel like even if that means the business stays smaller or, you know, um, other, other factors that people might think are kind of counterintuitive, it actually, uh, makes it work better longer term and, um, whether you stay in it or sell it. All of these people with this massive experience, the same people who built the internet, you know, are going to be selling these really inter- interesting companies. And they're just poised to get new blood, new life, new ideas into them. Then they're going to retire, you know, or they're going to go and build something else. The thing is, retirement, there's a lot of people who don't want to retire. I never want to retire. I, I can't tell you how many stories growing up of people who retired and then they died six months later. <laughs> 
or, you know, something, you know, uh, oh my gosh, we were just talking about this in your own life. Oh yeah. yeah. And so, and so we know that this happens. So I have this fear of reti retiring. And I think as long as I have something to give of this world and value, then I can sell what I have and I can create something else. I can go on as a consultant or a mentor, you know, so that is an incredible opportunity. And I am, I know that it's happened. The statistics are there, but how this is not being trumpeted in the, in the media because it because it is so positive is uh, it's beyond me in, in that well it's just too positive we're not going to get likes and outrage and shares so we're just not going to talk about this because the more unhappy people are the more our ratings go up i guess i don't know but just so you'll know the largest wealth transfer of history is 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 happening slowly right now as we speak and it's going to be happening for the next couple of years